welcome to episode 93 of the premium podcast, the Friday Nightmares podcast, with the most professional podcasters in the horror community, including those that live in Australia. My name <laughs> is Heather Powell, and I am and I come from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. I am one half of your hosting team, and with me, as always, is... Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from the town of Swartz Creek, in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy. Fully vaxxed, boosted, and waxed, and ready to climax, and if you can, please get me wet and feed me after midnight. I'm the man with the glorious beard, a.k.a. Mother of Cats, a.k.a. Man with a Humongous <clears throat> Ego, a.k.a. Scott Housen, a.k.a. Scotty Too Hottie, a.k.a. Spanky, a.k.a. The man that has the nice, short, and succinct intro in all of podcasting history, a.k.a. Tim Davis is just jealous. You know, on the topic of Tim Davis, you and him actually have something in common. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So, Tim, even though he does consider his wife's daughter from a previous relationship his daughter, and I would never, ever question that, Tim, technically you're a stepdad, and so is Scotty. Oh, that is true. This means we need to remake the stepdad franchise! (laughs) We need to get him in it! Like, absolutely. Who do you think can play the better, crazy... St- okay, it's you. It's definitely not him. I was about to be like, no, I know who it is. It's Scott. It's definitely Scott. 100% mm. new stepdad movie remade. Scott is the role. I don't know. I think it, that's a toss-up. Like, who would play the crazier stepdad? Tim or me? Hmm. Right? I'll I will definitely I... and both be the drunk aunt that gets killed off. I nominate myself <laughs> as the aunt that puts it together but dies halfway through the film. I love it. <laughs> that's pretty accurate to what would happen. Yeah, that's pretty, yeah. You say you'd be out uh, having a good old time drinking and one of us be stalking you. Oh, she's been getting too close to knowing our secrets. I'd be like, wait a minute, Scott isn't a famous podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> Friday I have Night- fooled you. Friday Nightmares only has 500 downloads a month. He's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know what I feel who has been boozled me this year so far? Like, who's gaslit me into giving them money every month and giving me nothing back? Shudder. Shudder. <laughs> <laughs> I, I So before we get into it, I just finished watching, what was it, The History of Violence? Is that what it was called? History of Evil. History of Evil. History of Violence you know, is actually I, a good movie by David yes, Cronenberg. <laughs> yes. So History of Evil. Scott, I thought maybe you were too harsh. I was like, you know, Scott's kind of becoming a Trump supporter now. Uh, like, oh, he's he's kind of wow. like, kind of. You know, maybe maybe he's walking that line. He had there's only so long one can live in Michigan without finally being, you know, forced wow. to the dark side, right? <laughs> and then I'm wow. like, oh no, 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 Scott's still Democratic. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's right. This is, what a what a piece of garbage film. Like I I I I trusted your judgment that it wasn't great, so I wasn't even gonna watch it. But then I was like, well. You know, we do watch all the Shutter films, and it's something we pride ourselves on as being the, the premium podcast um, and very professional <laughs> podcasters. So, and like, it's one of the few things that Rob won't fight with us that it's a 2024. Shouts out to the Hump. Um, thanks for oh, your please. ongoing support, Rob. Um, I'm sorry that your son listened to a line where I told you to, mm. you know. <laughs> You think that was you. great. Because I am your friend. So hopefully your son hears this part. Um, and, well, but... and also, make sure you have a conversation with your son about your, your number one film of 2024, Lisa Frankenstein. I'm sure you he know... wants to know all about how good that movie is. <laughs> I haven't watched it yet because I Neither agree with I. Rob. It looks dreadful. Like, it looks like not something that I would enjoy. But I will probably eventually watch it because as a premium podcaster, that's oh. very professional. <laughs> Uh, That's what you think of this year. I was just talking about, or me, sorry, me talking about how we're the premium podcast. I was going to say, I just usually let you go. And, and <laughs> like, yeah, 
I hope that at this point it's regular enough listeners. Like, can you imagine tuning in for the first time? And what here's the this, fuck? this fucking chick that laughs at all her own jokes. Fucks up movie titles all the time. Doesn't know shit. And, is, and thinks she's the premium podcaster. The review, the Google review would be the Google review. What is it? Review? Yes, yeah. would be uh, horrible, but it'd be true. Like none of it would be wrong. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, like, that's exactly how this goes down. But yeah, what a what a crummy what a crummy movie. And like, I didn't even get the whole like I don't know what they were going with. And this is a spoiler. I apologize. But what the fuck was with the dad in this film? Like, what the fuck was happening, Scott? I couldn't really even tell you. Like I said, it's been few weeks now since I've watched it, and yeah, I'm already forgetting a lot of it. All I remember is uh, husband and wife should not be together, because they are awful people No one to each should other. be in this movie. They should all be murdered. I, I want to decide with the fucking, like, people that were running the world, they were less annoying. Right. And what's with their, like, ghetto iPad that they had? They had this, like, iPad. They're like, oh, it's 2045, and they had, like, an iPad from, like, 2010 that they were using. Like, is our technology not, like, well, I mean, to be fair, I mean, to be fair, that probably would be about the case with Trump's America. Good point. Good point. <laughs> but, yeah, and then there's been nothing else from Shudder. It's been, it's been very slow. So yeah, we've been having to go to, we've been cheating on Shudder because it's given us no other choice. But here's the thing. Unlike Matt Wood, who breaks up with Shudder like every year except for October so he could just cram in his movie watches, mm. I'm a loyal bitch. And I'm going to stand by Shudder because they do – they have been putting older stuff. Here's the thing with Shudder is that they do provide a variety of films. Oh, so yeah. So if there's like other stuff – because they have something on there that made me laugh that I think we had to watch for. It's not horror. And <laughs> – I can't remember where it was some sequel. I'll have to look it up later. Oh, yeah. Death um, Stalker and Death Stalker. Yeah, too. yeah. The Death Stalker films. And I like, love if, those movies. If you want unique stuff, Shudder is where it's at, baby. Like, you can get some really, really mint stuff. It's just sometimes you just got to wait for the good drops to come on it. But it is worth your money. I'm not going to sit here and shit all over it because the new releases aren't great. Because there is other good stuff on Shudder. Oh yeah. Um, even their audio series was pretty good that I was listening to for a little bit. Like it's not a bad um, streaming service, but when you're premium podcasters like Scott and I, and you've seen all the movies, you know, because we take our craft very seriously, <laughs> then it's hard. But if you're someone like, let's say, you know, your initial start with M W, and you live in a place called UK, yeah. then maybe. <laughs> Maybe you just need to explore more on oh. Shudder, and you just need to really open your eyes to all the different horrors. Don't worry, I'll show I'll show this person when I come over all the different horrors that are available. <laughs> it's actually just like me forcing Matt to go through Shudder and watch films. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> like Heather just wasn't good. I'm like, you, you just don't get it. That's all. You just don't get it. <laughs> Getting all like frustrated and flustered. Oh, my. But, yeah, you had a fun night. I don't know. Do you want to talk about your Chinese buffet last night? I feel like that's worth talking about. Was it good? Oh, yeah. I'll say it's uh, – yeah, yesterday we celebrated our oldest son's uh, birthday, Connor. Uh, he turned 16. So he went out back to his uh, home hometown to a cafe to visit with his uh, old friends from high school. And uh, right after that – And talk about how creepy his stepfather is. Exactly. Like the plot of the movie. <laughs> But then uh, they came back and we went out to a Chinese buffet and met up with my parents. And this is the buffet that I've been want I wanted to take them to when they first moved in. And nice. we've been there three different times now. And yeah, they absolutely love it. And yeah, it's just you get your money's worth and you you leave nice and full. And it's even got a sushi buffet that's making fresh sushi sushi constantly. So I was talking with a gentleman at work who's also from Michigan, though he's from where was um Amist our um good um. MLMs, multi-level marketing, it's a big one. Amnesty, I think it is. Amway. Oh, okay. So he's near where the headquarters for Amway is. Hmm. That's where his family's from. Not Amway, but near Amway. And he was like, and he was saying, and I think he's 100% right, no one does buffets like the USA. That is true. No one does them buffets like USA, USA, USA. I would not, I would not argue with that fact because yeah, you can get, we get fat for a reason. <laughs> Did you say you get fat for a reason? <laughs> uh-huh. 
Hey, you know what? I bet you had some good Edens. How much was it per person last night? Like 16 bucks. Oh, yeah. It's worth it with two teenage boys, too. Oh, they yeah, probably ate for like, four people. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, eat to your heart's content. Right. But yeah, then also, you know, it's been, I haven't got a chance to watch as many 2024s as you because uh, my life got uh, really busy because we did just add a new addition to our family. Cujo. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, we added a nine-month-old Shepsky, which is a German hus- uh, German Shepherd Husky mix. He's a one-eyed nine-month-old puppers and uh, named River. And it's it's like having a toddler because, yeah, you, you Life has gotten a lot busier with him now because, like, having to go on walkies all the time and Mm making sure he burns up all the energy and then constant Mm -hmm. bathroom potty breaks and stuff. But Mm -hmm. he's so freaking cute and adorable. He looks like he's forever winking at you. That's what I absolutely love. Like, he's got got some secret that he's trying to, like, communicate to you. Mm -hmm. And he's making the winkies. It's pretty adorable. I uh, I think I love him and I don't even know him. Like, I think you should be concerned for the next time I come there. <laughs> God, like I, I feel like, cause I assume it will be for a wedding. Ideally yours or to Erica. Exactly. <laughs> or, or me to Erica. I don't know. Whatever happens, I guess it's all yeah. in God's hands now. Um, you know, I feel as though George will have to have a talk with me cause I'm assuming he'll want to come and he'll have to be like, look, Heather, River, we're visiting not taking visiting <laughs> and i'll be like he comes with me <laughs> and mickey would be like god damn it mom <laughs> now he'd be like who's this fucking asshole and why does he always look like he's winking at me <laughs> yeah what the hell he's, just, he's hiding something i know it I'll be like, look, Scott is the new stepfather from the stepfather films. This is who Scott is, okay? I need to get the dog out. <laughs> but what about the kids? They can fight him off. The dog has no chance. <laughs> oh, the funny we- thing is, uh, River, uh, you know, he I've only heard him bark I've only heard him bark like once, like last week, like one single bark, and then twice this morning. Um apparent like he woke me up because he barked because he was uh Erica was watching TV with him. Well, Apparently he's like Mickey. He sees oh, a yeah? dog on he sees a dog on TV and he looks up and he's like starts kind of like grumbling a little bit. Then he barked at one. <laughs> you know that means he's smart, right? Oh yeah. Is it is it hard for you now, dropping even further in the household? <laughs> I mean, I'm with our bully cats in this. Uh, the whole the whole chain of uh, hierarchy has been uh, reestablished once again. Yeah. So now you know. Gray and Biff are now the ones that are scared shitless of River. I've went down on the totem pole. Elizabeth and Poof are now higher up on the pole because they just don't give a shit about River now. They're just I'm like, always yep, on the pole. I get you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. God damn it. That was Erica on the pole. Actually, she's probably not. She went and got a college degree. <laughs> she's doing something worthwhile with her life. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> oh, but yeah, she's, she's the top tier. She's the top of the pole. <laughs> well, from the top of the pole, I watch her go down. <laughs> does she listen uh, still? Does she listen still? I think she still does. I, like, just I think tell her to still, listen to this one. <laughs> I'll say I think she may be a little bit, a little bit behind, but well, yeah, she has to fucking take care of all you fuckers. Of course, she's behind. <laughs> I mean, I do what I can to help, but yeah, dear, 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 she she does. She does. <laughs> oh, she she's she's the fucking boss. She'd be a good wife. You better, uh, you better wife that soon, Scott. Be careful. I better, yeah, I'll say because I gotta make sure I make sure I keep you away. Fuck. I know. I know. Hey, all the years I've had to put up with. Oh, Scott's so nice. Oh, Scott's so handsome. Oh, Scott's so sexy. Oh, look at Scott. I'm like, never. So many heterosexual men wanted Scott. I'm like, hi. They're like, oh no, no, no. We don't do that here. Where's that sexy smoke show? Oh, man. Well, anyway, I guess we should get into these movies. Uh, this we banter, have... though, is probably more entertaining than 50% in these movies. But Yeah, I was, was going to say, do we <laughs> have to? <laughs> Honestly, I watched some good shit. I Majority of the stuff I watched was good. Yeah, for me. There was <laughs> well, one. You don't watch what I watch. That's why. Uh, that plus, you, you, you're gaslit. Okay, no. that Let me assure you, any kind of Asian film is good. <laughs> Generally speaking, if it's on Netflix and it's an Asian film, it's probably good. you got to yeah. admit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
did you see this first one? Nope, I haven't seen anything till the third movie down. What the fuck? You could watch this at work. I just did. It, it didn't sound interesting. <sighs> this is interesting. <laughs> it's right up your alley. All right, this movie is called Cell Phone. It is an 88 minute runtime. Winnie, who is suffering from PTSD from the death of her fiance, starts seeing disturbing images on her cell phone about her future. If she doesn't figure them out in time, she will die. Um, Dave Bailey gave this baby a three star review, and I would gotta agree with him. Maybe I'm more a little bit at oh, Sandra Kane. I don't know. I'll call him by a stripper name. I'll try to remember that for the rest <laughs> of the show. Um, it's it's a good film. I thought this was an excellent low budget film. The young lady who stars in this, I found Whitney Rose um pine quite good it's a small cast there's literally only three people that you see regularly throughout it plus someone who's on the phone and really really good relationship based horror okay Um, low budget done well and a great use of a cell phone in a not a cheesy way like using a cell phone in a way that you know you don't have the big budget so you're focusing more on your storytelling and I think a three to three and a half star rating, which is what I see here between Tim Walker and Sander Kane and myself, is a very fair assessment. So if you like good character development, you enjoy the low budget, and you enjoy kind of like a little bit of a, it is a little bit of a mental illness. The PTSD part of it does come out um, for fair reason of why she's suffering from PTSD. It's not like, uh, not that ever PTSD is dumb for any reason, but you can understand right. where it came from. It's very clear. She's affable. Even the secondary character that's kind of like her friend and truly just her friend, they're platonic friends, um, is, is actually quite affable too. Everyone's affable in this, to be honest. Everyone's affable. And I think that makes a huge difference. So this is available for rent on Apple TV, Google Play, Voodoo, YouTube, Microsoft Store. If what I describe sounds like your jam, this is worth the money. Uh, this could be up for an award for me. If I was to do a, a top, let's see, how many do I have right now? I think I've watched 30. 37, I think. Good yeah, Lord. 37. I would probably put this in the top 15. Like it's in the, it's it's good. I know. That's because I watch movies because I am a serious podcaster. I'm at, I'm at 23. <laughs> well, you know, what does it take to be number one? Two is not a winner, and three nobody remembers. <laughs> Fair. I am number one. <laughs> Just gonna play that song over and over again. That was Nelly for anyone under the age of forty who has good taste. Um, <laughs> I you like Nelly? Taste. I, you like Nelly too? I, I like some Nelly. I don't know that song, oh. but I like some Nelly. Oh, you probably know it if I played it. I'll oh, play probably. it next time when you come up. We all, all know right, my yeah. good two thousand through two thousand beats. So yeah, this is worth it. Scotty, you should watch it. I think you would dig it. Okay. I actually, while you were talking, I added it to my watch list on Letterboxd but, to keep, to remind me to watch it. Cause so there's and, a lot of these movies that you talk about and I always forget which ones are good. So I, mm-hmm. now I'm trying to keep track by adding them to my watch list. And you can watch this at work. There's nothing bad in it or scandalous in it. It's, it's a, yeah, it's pretty tame. Okay. Good to know. And yet the next one is you as well. And this <clears> one I think I skipped because if I remember correctly, you were not... Uh, yeah, oh, Tim Davis gave it three stars and a review. We're going to have to definitely read that bad boy. Yeah. Um, I didn't think this was horrible. I just know that you don't have tons of time right now. So I didn't recommend it, but I don't think it's a bad film. So Stranger in the Woods. This is an 82 minute runtime. Just when you think you're out of the woods, Olivia and her friends go on vacation after Olivia nearly drowns with a slit wrist in her bathtub after her fiance's funeral. Her friends suspect that she tried to kill herself, but no one, but she believes someone attacked her. Um, let's read Tim Davis's review. A creepy low budget film that was made decently, but the story, especially the third act, didn't mesh well with me. That's interesting. I thought the third act was the best part of it. Oh, wow. Tim, look at us. Always at wars. The, the two um, professional podcasters. I know. Wars. That's what happens when you have two premium professional podcasters from two different <laughs> leagues. Um, I, I actually thought this was a well done low budget film. I thought the third act was quite good. Uh, all the characters made sense to me. Everything made sense. There's of course a little bit of uh, lack of believability in some parts. I thought it ended a little abruptly. Now that I'm talking about it, I probably enjoyed it more than I'm giving it credit for. Um, I actually thought it was pretty clever and I thought that the acting was good. The writing was decent. So Scott, maybe do watch this. 
because okay. I think it is easy to watch at work. And right now it's slow for 2024. So True. Um, maybe you'll find this a little more, will stand out to you a little bit more. Uh, it is available on Hoopla, Apple TV, Google Play, Microsoft Store, YouTube. That being said, to watch this movie, you need to enjoy low, de- low budget. You need to enjoy a lot of dialogue and character development and waiting to the third act. For stuff to get really kind of horror-ish, so to say. You kind of got to give it the time to get there. Uh, but in 82-minute runtime, it doesn't overstay its welcome. So it's not like you're sitting through an hour and a half before anything happens. It does start to pick up uh, relatively right. quick. So, nice. Yeah. Okay, so and yeah, now, I, will, I, I will add that one to my list. Now, finally, you're going to actually do something. So Yes. <laughs> so uh the uh, first movie i watched after our last recording so i figured i'd try to get this one out of the way because yeah, I mean, yeah but it's called uh life of bell uh it's a 72 minute runtime the synopsis is on july 18th 2018 annabelle starnes went missing what was found in the home would shock this small town of south carolina uh this was a to be watch because i just see i'm like ah it's to be it's found footage I always try to give the found footage for the year the mm-hmm, year's mm-hmm, watch. Mm-hmm. Um, this definitely is a very, very low budget, like micro budget, I would say. And uh, definitely takes uh, very heavy inspiration from the filming style of paranormal activity, where it's just going between different cameras throughout the house. And, you know, it's a lot of still shots and um, but, you know, with micro budget, most of the time you it, this happens, uh, the acting is just not on par. And this one, <laughs> this one, the acting was a bit rough. Obviously, with the little kids, I give uh, leniency to because they were just young kids. And yeah, they, yeah. they felt believable for the most part. It's yeah. the mother that it just kind of mm. goes off the rails a bit. And the script just didn't really feel like it was that fleshed out to make it and uh interesting granted i'm not going to complain it was a free watch but it's not something i would really recommend it just it was there i think i gave it uh because i know matt wood watched it sexy matt wood watched it too mm, Let's you see know what that gets me a wood fuck yeah he gave it uh, two out of five stars, and he's like, I wanted to like this, but it's so slow, even for a film that's only 70 minutes long. Nothing really happens till the end, and then you don't see much. I do think it's well-directed, and the found footage element was done well, and the reasons behind it. thought the adult acting was mediocre, but the kids stole the show. They were excellent. Some of the scenes generally made me smile and chuckle. And, yep, I'm not going to go into any more right now, because, uh, yeah, there's little spoiler talk, but him and I both gave it the, like, same review. Like, it for a low budget, you know, good try. Just story mm-hmm. wasn't enough fleshed out. And yeah, the main actor, the adult actors were, yeah. And it's but, a Tubi watch, right? Yeah. Yep. It's only available on Tubi. <laughs> God's like, that's because I love Tubi. <laughs> <laughs> that's because the app of Tubi it seems to be the only damn thing that works on my Amazon Fire Stick in our bedroom nowadays. <laughs> that and YouTube. Uh, that and Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that anymore. <laughs> that's true. That's true. You're too tired. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what is porn? <laughs> what is sex? <laughs> is that that thing you do? <laughs> is that that sloppy thing that it makes like the funny noises and the and, and the, the smells and the stuff? <laughs> the squishy. The squishy. <laughs> is, this, is this where the lube comes in? I forget. <laughs> what is it? How does it work? Well, speaking of sex, that moves into my next movie, actually. Oh, boy. Um, this I haven't movie, heard of this one. It's uh, fucking excellent. This movie is called Soulmates. It is a 95-minute runtime, and this is the synopsis. Two unsuspecting strangers, Jason and Allison, find themselves participants in a twisted new dating service led by the matchmaker. It forces two singles inside a nightmarish maze assigned to help them find their soulmate or die trying this has a 3.0 rating on the letterbox and no one has watched it because i'm a premium podcaster so clearly i'm reading i'm leaning the charge on this one there is a there is one uh first i'm looking it up right now and there's one person uh on my list that's seen it. his name is vic grimes yeah me too <laughs> okay it says if jigsaw ran a dating service that was his review <laughs> that is exactly what this is it Interesting. is it is so much fun 
Um, I suspected the ending, but I didn't care. It was fucking great. Some of the special effects, the practical effects, chef's kiss. Uh, this was not a huge budget film. We are not looking at a you know a big studio back in this one or anything like that. Basically, these two people wake up chained to each other, and they have to survive this basically escape room of torture. And it's hmm. room after room that simulates the idea of getting to know someone and going on dates, and other people's lives are put at risk, and then it goes on. This movie is fucking excellent. Um, thank you, whoever made this movie and released it this year. I know it had a limited release last year, Rob Humphreys. But this year is when it's had its main release, and I totally recommend it to anyone. At an 88 minute runtime, or no, sorry, 95 minute runtime, you are not wasting your time with this bad boy. It is available on Apple, Google, YouTube, Microsoft, and Amazon. It is worth any price if you enjoyed any kind of torture porn when it comes to horror. And it is called Soul Mates. You will hear it, about it again at the end of this year. That's how confident I am in that. Wow, all right. So, oh. yeah, that one is added to my watch list as well, then. Yeah, watch that with Erica if you can. All right. Uh, as I'm guessing, is this a Good Friends Plex? It is. Okay. Yes. All right, so I'll look at, keep an eye out for that one. And you have not watched the next one, have you? Mm, I have not. Well, sometimes a hero needs to come along. I noticed <laughs> no other podcasters have watched it either because I'm a premium podcaster. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, oh. it, in, no, not on my list. They don't count if they're not on my list. Tim Walker watched it. He's not a podcaster. Oh, isn't he? I thought he was. No, maybe. Oh, shit. Tim, are you a pod? Tim? Tim? <laughs> Tim, if you listen, are you a podcaster? So write something. You know who is Jason Gray on Letterbox? Because that's someone I need to follow. Yeah, Jason Gray. Jason. Uh, send us your Letterbox because I don't think we're following each other. No, we definitely need to follow Jason. Jason always gives the better reviews. Read our comment page on Facebook for shit that Jason has to say. Yes. Indigo. Indigo is available on the Netflix. Netflix Canada. Netflix United States. I don't know internationally, maybe. It is a 118-minute runtime. What do you see is the tagline. In order to rescue her sister from the clutches of a vengeful ghost, a woman must unlock her, her latent supernatural abilities and navigate the metaphysical realms. This is an exorcism movie. This is a perfect session movie. But it, thank God it's not about, like, hardcore Christianity. Definitely some Christian themes in it because I do think this was made in the Philippines and there's a lot of Christian faith there. But this wasn't, like, annoyingly like that. Uh, there's certain individuals in this folklore who can see demons. They're not necessarily, like, like a religious figure, but they're someone that has the gift. And they're able okay. to see evil, and they can confront demons. And this movie talks about if your powers were suppressed for whatever reason, and then for some reason they had to come back to save someone you love. And like typical Filipino movie endings, it's not a fucking happy ending. You think it's going to be a happy ending, but shit just gets worse, which I fucking love. Ooh, I love it. I love that shit. I love like these, you know, possession films where like they're like, oh, well, we solved this problem. But guess what? <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's more realistic. I uh, I really did enjoy this film. I thought the acting all around was was decent. Uh, watched it with subtitles, which was great um everyone did a good job it is a long movie at 118 minutes so you do have to be invested for the long haul but i would say it is worth it and entertaining if you have netflix and this is what netflix does well they do pick up good international horror i think every year scott and i have acknowledged it some international horror film that comes up on netflix is usually our top two or you sometime in our top 10 not it gets awards from us um and definitely if you have netflix this is worth it it's called indigo nice another one that i've added to my watch list you're gonna make me busy well i told you to watch this before but i know it's hard for you because it's subtitled and you don't have a lot of time at home right and right? distraction with boys and puppers Try to watch it before the end of the year. It, oh, I, will. I know you don't love exorcism films, but honestly, Scott, this isn't as annoying as some other ones that we've well, seen. What I was going to say, I like exorcism films when they are done in a unique way that's not just been there, done that. And it's like, I don't know, it's also annoying when it's not fucking white people in America. You know what I mean? Like, and it's not the Catholic Church, and it's not like that other shit that's been exactly. done so many times over, right? So. 
you know, it is a little bit of a formula come to life, but I, I enjoyed it. So let me know when you see it. Oh, definitely. I will definitely try to watch that when I get it, as soon as I get a chance. Uh, so I will jump on to the next one. I think I noticed you probably have not watched this one yet. Uh, this one is called Frogman. Uh <laughs> Okay, uh, it's got a 80 minute runtime, and I got a I I I love this uh, tagline: "The croaks are no hoax." <laughs> <laughs> That's cute, actually. Uh, so, an amateur filmmaker struggling to turn his passion into a career returns home to Loveland with his friends, determined to obtain irrefutable proof that the cryptid legend of Frogman does exist. Um, so yeah, this is a found footage film. Uh, it's gotten a lot of uh, awards and festivals and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I, like, so because I, I watched the trailer and yeah, it had like a bunch of awards like in the beginning. So I'm like, okay, I'll give this a shot. And yeah, it was a pretty entertaining found footage film. Uh, the acting I thought was all around good. Uh, the film, the found footage filming, which you know I always like try to nitpick if I can because yeah. like, you gotta make it believable. Yeah. They, they make it believable. There's no music playing in the background. There's no editing chops. Nice. There's no nice, nice. Like, there's always a reason that someone is filming one way or another. Um, and uh, then it gets to like the first two acts. It's kind of like almost like a the close thing I can say is like Blair Witchish in the way that it just slow builds. Kind of things are kind of sprinkled in, happening here and there, interviewing yeah. townsfolk and stuff. Then the third act happens, and shit just goes off the rails. Um, the practical effects are really cool. Some are corny, but like almost in a purposeful, how can you make a frogman creature look mm. not corny type thing? Um, mm. But the practical effects are all well done. Like It all looks good. Uh, and yeah, I had a blast with this. I have it as a 7 out of 10 right now. I think talking about it and thinking about it, it might go up to an 8, 8.5 for me. Because, yeah, I did enjoy this. The characters, while uh can be a little bit frustrating with some of them, it was still, like, all part of that whole package. It worked wonderfully. Well, I had this on my watch list, so that's great to know. Um, yeah. And I don't know why we said that there wasn't good films. So far, every film that we bought, like, besides the one, we're like, check out. Well, so don't so listen far, to us. Well, I say, so far, you're the only one that's uh, check out besides this one, because I've only watched one other besides, uh, besides this. True, true, good point. <laughs> right. I'm a premium podcaster, that's true. So I forget 100%. that. Right. I'm like the, the brand name. You're like some knockoff fucking great value. <laughs> i I pretty much am. <laughs> Only people in North America and Canada got that. The, everyone else is like, great value. What the fuck? Okay, for the UK, it's like Scott came from Poundland, okay? And I came from fucking um, a really nice grocery store. High-end. High-end grocery store. Um, oh, and I want to mention real quick, uh, this is available to rent on Apple TV, Google Play, and YouTube right now. And renting worthwhile, yes? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Especially if you are a found footage fan. Look at that, huh? Frogman, found footage renting. Excellent. So the Philippines have their own version of VHS movies, but they're called Shake, Rattle, and Roll. There's a whole bunch of them. Have you heard of this before? I have not. Yeah, and like, wild, huh? Well, they got one on Netflix right now that's called Shake, Rattle, and Roll Extreme. <laughs> it's 147 minutes. I know. That's correct, everybody. 147 minutes. Hey, the hey. I iconic horror movie franchise is back and even more extreme a series of vignettes continue a neglected and gadgeted addicted six-year-old who befriends who befriends a malevolent entity um i won't read more of that because it's a spoiler a group of influencers gathering to collab in a luxurious mansion and a bunch of thrill seekers who go on a trip to watch a meteor shower all these stories were fucking Trey Bay, Trey like, like excellent. Hmm. I think everyone will walk out of this with stories that they like more or stories they like less, like any, um, any kind of anthology. But if this doesn't win anthology of the year for me, I will be fucking shocked. I don't know what's going to come and hold a candle to this. Um, it's, I would watch it a second time. I enjoyed it so much, especially the first story. And holy uh, shit, I just got to interrupt you because you were saying this is like, you know, a series. I'm scrolling through. This one is the 17th film in the franchise. 
I would love to go back and watch the other ones because Holy this is pretty shit. high quality. It's good. Yeah, it looks like the first one uh, was all the way back in 1984, I think it said. Nice. Yeah, 1984. Wow. That's wild. Yeah, holy crap, that's a long going franchise. It's I can see why. Like I'll be real with you. I really fucking enjoyed these three movies. Yes, they're long. Um, they're not it's not a short film. You can break it up into chunks. Like you could watch the first story, the second story, and the third story. George watched it with me. He enjoyed all of them. Um, like they're all good. They're all good. The the special effects are good, the acting's good, everything's good. Like it's good, 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 good. Everything's creepy. It's it's well fucking done. Um nice. congratulations, Netflix. You may have a film again this year in my top ten. Like I can't praise this movie enough. I really, really enjoyed it. I think as an anthology, it needs to be watched. Um, it is only available right now in subtitles, so you do have to be focusing in on it. Um, but it's on the Netflix. If you have the Netflix, check it out. It's definitely worth your time. Awesome. Yes, I because I did add this one to my watch list on Netflix. So Oh, fuck just yeah. Gotta, I just got to get the time to do it. I might even just watch it in segments, like watch one story. Then I think it's story. a good idea. It would be easier for you to do it that way. And they're easy to do because they're basically like full films. Right. Okay, perfect. All right, so the next one, uh, you and I finally got one that we both watched. Uh, Let me pull that up real quick. And you liked it more, so I think definitely you should read the charge on it. Yeah, probably not for the right reasons, though, but we'll we'll, we'll see. Uh, (laughs) So uh, the next one is Malicious. Uh, 91-minute runtime, the truth might set you free. The McCabe family's weekend getaway is turned upside down when a mysterious stranger knocks on their door. Um, yeah, they're basically, uh, I'll give a little more detail here before I get into my thoughts, but this is a politician and his family at a getaway. He married into this family. Um, so daughter and mother are you know, not like da- the mother is the daughter is the mother's, but yeah, the husband is stepdad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And of course there's a, obviously stepchild, stepfather, hatred, like you see in movies all the time. But there's a, there, there, it gets into reasons for that that I will not describe right now. But um, yeah, this is a interesting movie. Just and I think I like it more just because it is politician gets what's coming to him, mm-hmm. and I am all for politicians getting what's coming to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some of the some people just use this power for the wrong fucking reasons, and yep, I I'm not a real politically driven person when it comes to movies most of the time, but when I was watching this movie, I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Show <this motherfucker. laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> but like it's not a great movie. It's questionable. Um, but at the same time, like I say, I kind of dig that part of it and it was definitely an entertaining watch. Yeah, I think that's a really fair statement. I think everyone does a good job of acting. The asshole politician is an asshole. Like, he does a great job of you being like, gee, you're a piece of shit. Yeah. Which is great. Um, The young lady in it does a great job of performing. I'll be honest. I wasn't, I was a little shocked at the ending, but not too shocked. Yeah. Um, I, I thought it was okay. Um, You know, it was Stranger Danger, I guess, done well by... I just felt that some of the things were just so stereotypical over the top, though I do I agree with you, Scott. You make so many good points. It does happen. There are people 100% like that. I just felt like it was like everything. Like, you know, there was like all we needed for him to do was murder a puppy. And that would have been like the last thing that could have happened that right. he, I could have done. You know what I mean? Yeah, because he's basically every politician stereotype rolled up into just one character instead of spread across all these different politicians. Yeah, basically, right? But it's not bad for a low-budget film. Again, like if I look at it from a low-budget filming perspective, used their budget well, kept it simple, did a good job of making it entertaining – like definitely this has been a year of some really well done low budget films. Like yeah. whoever is, is, you know, wh- whoever's picking up these films and getting them distributed, it's a nice change to see. But if you don't like this kind of low budget, then you're going to tell me 2024 sucks. So, you know, it's, there's some good quality low budgets that have come out. Cause we haven't had a lot of the blockbusters yet or anything that's been really like, well, I guess Imaginary's out right now. And I don't, I haven't heard much about that so far. Yep. Have you heard anything? I've, 
It sounds like your typical Blumhouse style movie. I don't even know if it was done by Blumhouse, but it sounds like your typical Blumhouse style. So it'll probably just be okay. a, probably just be a you know easy watch, Nothing easy else. watch, entertaining. You know, yeah. on non premium podcasters' top ten list because they're exactly. not like you and I, right? Exactly, hundred <laughs> percent. Where where can people watch this though? Where is uh, there... this one is available? Uh, Amazon, Apple TV, Google Play, Vudu. Yep. So available to rent there. I'd say if it's like two ninety nine, three ninety nine rental, go for it. Mm. Like it's, it's not amazing, but it's not terrible. Yeah, I think that's just a fair above way average. To assess it. Yeah, it's just above like like other podcasts. Just, Ex- just above. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, and since you had been doing a lot of the talking with all the other films, I know we both watched this one as well. So I'll bring this one in as well. Please do, because you also liked this more than I did. Yes, I did. All right, so this next one is called The Seeding. Uh, it has a 100-minute runtime. Uh, when a hiker gets lost in the desert, a gang of feral children propelled by haunting legacies traps him in a sadistic battle for survival with a frightening endgame. Um, this is basically a modern kind of twist on uh, The Hills Have Eyes, in a way, it seems, except with just children instead of just inbred people and um, yeah, maybe there might there might be some of that too. Who knew you think but we but I but um, uh, I thought all the acting in this was really well done. I thought it was really well shot, well directed. The story had me intrigued. I wanted to know where the hell it was going. Who who this woman he was trapped with in this giant pit was, and like how she got there and this and that. And I kind of seen the reveal of. Like, towards the end of how she got there, I kind of seen that coming. But at the same time, the ride the ride to that reveal, I thought was really well done. And it had some decently gory moments to it, uh, some shocking moments to it as well, like with some things that happened to others. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But yeah, all around, I found this to be a very highly enjoyable, kind of creepy... Uh, kind of claustrophobic watch because, yeah, you're basically a trapped animal. There is no escape for you in this pit that they threw this guy in. And yeah. uh, I will give a shout out to Tim Davis and uh, Luffy. They both watched it. Tim Davis really liked it. And Luffy gave it, I think he said a 9 out of 10. He said this was the the first film in a little while that has actually scared him. Wow. Yeah. Is he high? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he might have been, but... He must have been as fuck watching this film then. <laughs> I uh, I don't think I got fear from this film. Um, but yeah, I would say that Matt Wood and Tim both had some pretty strong reviews on this. Tim, if you think this is what's turning around for you, you need to watch more films. Because <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't been that bad this year, Tim. But it's tough. He's in Australia. Like, he probably True. doesn't get half of the shit we do, right? So if he's only getting half of it and half of it is pretty shitty, then that's pretty tough to to find stuff that's decent. Um, this was not a Heather film. That being said, I am nothing but praise for how it was made, how it was acted, what the purpose was. It's a great movie and I can see this being in people's top films of the year. It just wasn't for me. So I'm glad you that's talked fair. so highly about it because I was like, yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's creepy. Yeah, like, it just didn't stick with me. But that being said, this film's, like, fucking give credit where credit's due. Like, and it and it was something unique. Like, like yeah, you could say they ripped off from some other concepts, like The Lost Boys from Peter Pan, only, like, real fucked. <laughs> right. Right? Well, and I was going to say, I mean, almost all films take inspiration from something. I mean, how can you not at this Exactly. Point? But this wasn't, like, I didn't feel like this had been done before. Like, yeah. I didn't feel like, oh, I've seen this movie just in a different package. Like, I felt this was actually quite unique. And at the 100-minute runtime, I don't think it overstayed its welcome. And I thought that it was really, really dark and well done. It just didn't hit me like it hit other people. But objectively, I can totally get 9 out of 10s, 8 out of 10s, 7 out of 10s. Like, totally, totally get it. Um, So... Watch it, people. Yeah, I was just saying, you'll enjoy it. It's well done. Tim, Tim Davis did bring up on his podcast uh, that you know who knows if a rewatch would. He he says a rewatch may kind of affect this movie for the negative because you already know you already know and see what's coming. And I'm going. I, I can yeah. see that. I can see that if you are the type that would 
do a lot of rewatches throughout, you know, and this was one that you really liked. I could see a rewatch each time, just kind of just, eh, it's less and less each time, maybe. I could see it. I, I, I guess so. I think it's very solid for at least a one-time watch. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely a standard of this year, and I definitely think people should pay whatever. It's on all the streaming services. Like, the only thing I'll add for Canon is Cineplex, but it's on everything else, like YouTube, Microsoft Store, Amazon. Did you see anything else there, like Vudu or anything? Yep, Vudu, Google Play, Apple TV. Uh, yeah. Yep. So yeah, it's available uh, think- to rent everywhere, basically. Like, this is worth watching. If you are trying to watch 2023s this year and you listen to our show and you're looking for us to tell you to watch a film, you know, so far out of the list we've talked about, I would say the two Netflix films, 110%, Shake, Rattle, and Roll Extreme, um, Indigo, the the Soulmates, which is the VOD, the seating, um, are ones that are must-watches. Like, I don't care who you are. I think you'll enjoy those films. The and other Frogman. ones— And Frogman. I think the other ones are decent. If you like low budget, they're decent. Um, but I wouldn't say the average maybe horror viewer would like them. Um, right. The next the next one is a UK film, and I should have known better. <laughs> so this was released in 2022, like made in 2022 at film festivals. Didn't get a wide release till this year, and there's a reason why. Oh, boy. The curse is real at this 82-minute runtime. At uh, the behest of her boss, journalist Ingrid returns to her ancestral home where several children are found slaughtered in the nearby woodland. With the village suspecting the infamous winter witch, sound familiar? Mm. Witches? Yep. In the sure woods? Does. Stealing kids? Anyway, together <laughs> with their daughter, Eleanor, the estranged grandmother, Oma Ingrid, on Ingrid's husband, must uncover the truth and stop the curse. I felt Mm. like I was cursed from watching this movie. Um, (laughs) It was fine. It was a typical folklore story. The problem was that it was very low budget and it relied on a couple of people to act that weren't great actors. Um, I think if they had chosen different people for the cast, it would have been different. But I feel like when I look at the list here, these are the people in this film, like some of them, this was with the exception of a few this was kind of their first big break set stuff with a couple of bigger names from Britain thrown in. Like the woman that played Oma is Rula Lansky, who's been in a lot of other films over the years. So, you know, you, you throw in a couple, it's like when you throw Barbara Crampton in a film. Right. right? You know what I mean? To just kind of be like, well, Barbara Crampton's in it. All the fucking horror fans are going to go watch it. It kind of right. felt like that. <laughs> okay. So, I don't know. If you really want to watch some folklore stuff on witches, it's available on Tubi for free. That's the only place I recommend it. I don't recommend paying for this movie. No offense, filmmakers, but at least with Tubi, you'll watch it. There'll be commercials. They'll get paid for the commercials. The end. And that is The Winter Witch. Good to know to avoid. (laughs) Ah, this one. Okay. (laughs) I could have swore the main chick in this was a fucking porn star. Like, she had those, like, she had that look, like, you know, you know the porn star look? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it looked like that. So beware the boogeyman. (sighs) (laughs) that says it all right there (laughs) for her first day of orientation dr tristan mckenzie makes her way to the silverdale silverdale psychiatric hospital for the criminally insane where she learns of the estranged series of cases from the similarly strange dr moon everyone is a little bit strange in this film it is anthology and how the anthology is based is that this new doctor is coming to this uh, mental health hospital and the each patient is having their story told. And each story that the patient tells is around the boogeyman. So the boogeyman has managed to effectively stalk and hurt each patient. And you hear okay. their story and then there's a wraparound um, with the two doctors. Not a bad film. You know, now that I kind of recapped it, some of the stories weren't too bad. Some of them were really good. There was one particularly at the end that I actually thought was really well done. I don't think it was a bad effect at an anthology. I think it was better than Midnight Peep Show, which I felt like was the most disappointing peep show (laughs) that we could have ever (laughs) seen. I do think this one had better stories in it but you know after seeing something like shake rattle and roll extreme i have a hard time saying 
go watch Beware the Boogeyman for anthologies. I would say if you like low budget films and anthology films that are based on the concept of a new story about a boogeyman haunting each person, then this is worth a watch. But it's only for pay right now. It's only on Apple TV, Google Play, YouTube, Amazon Video. Um, and I don't know if it's worth the price tag that's going to be attached to it, to be honest with you. So if you're an anthology completist, sure. But I think Shake, Rattle, and Roll Extreme is a better choice for anthology. Though I did appreciate some of the stories with Beware of the Boogeyman. So, you know, perhaps if you do have the time and you're a serious podcaster like myself, then take the time and watch it, I guess, if you have access to it. You didn't watch this next one, did you? No, I actually have not even heard of this one. It's on one of our good friends, Plex. Um, I understand why Liongate is producing weird-ass movies now. Like, what happened, Liongate? Why are you coming out with the weirdest films? Uh, this is called Sunrise, and it is an 84-minute runtime. The sun, the oh. sun never sets on evil. Before Sorry. I, uh, before uh, going further, let me just let me just guess by the title: vampire film. How did you know? <laughs> I knew it. My gosh, Scott, you're so smart. Uh, Must come from being a premium professional podcaster like yourself. That's right. Only premium podcasters like us would know this. That's right. So not at all easy to figure out. (laughs) When an ex-cop named Fallon returns to the scene of a horrific crime, the residents of a rural town soon discover the dark visitor is really a vampire who feeds on blood and fear. (gasps) No. After he befriended by after he's befriended by a kind immigrant family, the insecta killer is faced with a choice between revenge and redemption. I wouldn't say that he's like a horrible person. I would say the dude that plays like the town fucking racist run the mail guy is the real piece of shit. His name is Reynolds. Um, he's played by Guy Pierce, and he's just an Ooh. asshole the entire time. Yeah. Wow. He's just an asshole the entire time. Just an a asshole. Guy Pierce, interesting. Yeah. He uh he's like the most racist dude, classes dude, sexist dude. Like you name it, he drops it. You oh, you boy. name one offensive thing. Like it begins off with him executing a store owner because the store owner didn't pay him on time for protection. Oh jeez. So a good like that gives that gives you an idea, right? So of course the vampire looks like a fucking saint compared to this piece of shit. So it's fine. It's entertaining enough, but I found the dialogue too quote unquote in your face. Um I didn't really find it endearing. I found the all the characters were kind of annoying. The the asshole, so Reynolds, his mom and him seem to have this weird incestuous relationship going on, which is super weird. And it's like super What's weird fucking, about that? Yeah, sorry. I know you live in Michigan, but exactly. for the rest of the world, it's actually not that common. Um, oh, oh, oh. Sander Kane gave it a star and a half. Oof. And this was the same man that liked the movie about flowers last year. <laughs> So, like, you know what I mean? If he's giving it one and a half, you know it's a piece of poo-poo. But if for some reason you, like, like to support Lionsgate and you really like vampire films, it's available on Apple TV, Google, Amazon, Microsoft Store, and YouTube. Um, You know, I don't hate watching it because I like bringing it to the table and I like showing that, you know, we watch a variety of things and... I will say that the filming was good and, you know, it was it was entertaining enough. I just don't think it's anything to run out and rent and that you need to, like, go watch anytime soon. Now, the next one I would say is a lot better, but you watched this one, too, did you not? I sure did. Uh, I'll let yeah. you lead it in. All right. So the next one, uh, well, actually, the final 2024 for us, um, this one is called uh, Cold Meat. Uh, with an 80 minute, 89 minute runtime, outside is dangerous, inside is deadly. David Peterson is passing through the Colorado Rockies after having a young diner wait, or after saving a young diner waitress from her violent ex husband during a break from driving. He hits the road again alone through a dangerous snow blizzard. One false move behind the wheel has him waking up inside a ravine in the eye of the storm, but the cold is the least of his worries when a beast starts prowling outside. How will he survive? Uh, so, yeah, this is a, you know, basically survival film in a way because you're stuck outside or stuck in the elements in a car. I mean, we've seen this before. I forget what the name of it was with uh, 
for like it was one of like a 2021 or a 2020 yeah i remember thing. it was the couple that got stuck in the car and yeah yeah whatever uh, it was called we'll call it below zero but it was something else but we'll just yeah. call it that for now yeah so it's basically like that but uh with a couple of little t- added twists into it um but I won't get into that. I will just say that I did not see the twist coming, and I mm-hmm. was kind of caught off guard, like, oh, shit, okay, this got more intriguing. Um, but this is basically supposed to be a Wendigo story, like, you know this right from the very beginning, because they talk about the Wendigo mythology uh, right in the beginning, and then you just kind of, in a way, almost forget that the Wendigo is a thing, because <laughs> it like it just yeah. it's, it's there but it's not and it's yeah. just like very 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 tiny part of this film uh it's definitely more character driven um but all in all i thought it was very interesting very tense at moments um i thought the actors in this played off each other really well they had really good chemistry and i yeah i found this all around quite entertaining the just uh the, yeah, the whole it could have just foregone the whole when to go thing yeah, I don't know. I like to the point where I messaged Scott and I was like, "What was with the moose?" He's like, "That was a Wendigo." I'm like, "Oh!" Yes. And you don't even like all you see is the horns. You don't see anything else. Yeah, like I was like, and then what was the point of it? Like the Wendigo had nothing to do with it. No, no, I no. I didn't think right. Um, no, like it could, it could have just been they could have made this movie and not added the Wendigo myth and it would have just played out the exact same way. But this is the first movie I have seen in a long time where the synopsis did not give it away. <laughs> right. Where I thought it was going to be a very different film. Yeah. And it was not. And I liked that. Um, I thought this was a really, really good film. I just didn't understand the Wendigo part, but that didn't take it away from me. Like I still really fucking enjoyed it. And I would recommend it. Yeah, I definitely would recommend it, too, because it's, like I say, it still, like, was tense at moments, uh, and the acting is really good, and I was just intrigued the entire time wanting to know how this was going to play out. And where is it available, Scotty? Uh, this is available, uh, let me pull it up real quick, uh, Apple TV, Google Play, Vudu, Amazon, and YouTube to rent, and yeah, I'd say it's worth the rent. Yeah, yeah, I think so, too. I think it's a solid 2024. Um, so you've heard it, heard it here first on, uh, the premium podcast. It is the Friday Nightmares podcast of all the, the great 2024 horror films. I've actually seen some ones added, uh, to our good friends Plex I that I that want too. to watch. Did you add any to your watch list? Should we give a little teaser of what we're going uh, to watch? I, I haven't added any of them to my watch list. I've only been adding what you mentioned to my watch list. And oh, I, I just... tried. I tried to watch late checkout. Don't don't do it. What is it? Late checkout. Oh, okay. I yeah, I didn't no. see that one on there. So I mean, there may be some new ones I hadn't even seen yet. So okay. So there's two that I added: the stop motion. Yes, I was curious about that one. And Romy, another AI gone wrong, which I'm here oh, for yes. it. And there's also a new Tubi original, and Jason Lloyd said it's definitely like his favorite Tubi uh, original this year, and it's actually oh. a, pretty good, a pretty good slasher. Let me look it up real quick. I have it on my list. Uh, the Camp the camp Host. The Camp Host. Does it look like a campy movie, like like they go to a summer camp? Uh, kind of. It's uh, when a young couple and their dog lodge at an idyllic campground, things turn terrifying when the owner reveals herself as a psychopathic killer. It's called The Camp Host? Yep. Why don't I have it? No. Oh. Like two words, Camp Host. It's not, oh, but not, uh, oh, okay. Hold on. Not one word. I don't know if that would make a difference or not. Nope. Ah, bollocks. <laughs> well, I'll just have to ask someone to add it for me. Right. right. Damn, damn different countries movies yeah fucking countries yeah we're, fuck them we're fuck we're, that. we're basically just like we're basically the same country in a way except you we just basically have better, are you just have better health care and everything else and everything else <laughs> everything that makes society better <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah canada's just this perfect place let's go with that we'll run yeah. with that well, i'm not <laughs> saying that <laughs> yeah it's definitely not um so for older watches so Many, many, many moons ago when Scott and I used to do nothing but watch movies because it was the pandemic, I watched a little film called The Bridge Curse in 2020, and I actually really yeah. enjoyed it. It was a Thai, it was a Taiwanese film, and uh, I was cruising through Netflix the other night, and I was like, the, bird, the Bridge Curse Ritual? Could it be the sequel? 
so yes, I watched the sequel to The Bridge Curse, and you know what? It was pretty fucking good. Nice. I really enjoyed it. Um, we got a, only one returning character from the first one for obvious reasons. If you've seen the bridge curse, basically this is another haunted place, um, folklore film. Okay. Only it's building on what happened the last time and they play the elevator game in this one, but it's definitely not as annoying to people as they found the elevator <laughs> game. Um, well, it's a Taiwanese film, so you automatically know it's going to be scarier. True. Right. So there is definitely all the tropes of any kind of ghost film that you would see as a Thai, in a Taiwanese film. Um, it's fucking excellent. I don't know. If you enjoy these type of movies, I think it's totally worth the watch on Netflix. It's 101 minutes. It's creepy. It's well done. It's well acted. The ending leaves you like, oh, fuck, things are not resolved. Great. I thought they were. Just kidding. Uh -huh, um, fooled you. Right? Which I do love with Netflix. It is also, I don't believe it is dubbed. It is only in subtitles. So you do have to watch and read subtitles, but fucking recommend this one. I actually like it more than I like the first one. I thought it was better. I think they had more money this time around. So they were able to do a little bit more, which helps. Um, but I really, really enjoyed it. And that is called The Bridge Curse, The Ritual on Netflix. Nice. And uh, I did want to bring up, since you were talking about sequels of films you watched back in like 2020, 2021. Yes. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you noticed on our friend's uh, Plex, but uh, the sequel to the uh, low budget film at Butchers. Or at Sorry, my phone started playing there. Oh, the okay. sequel like, to Butchers is available? Yeah, I think it's on our good friend's Plex. I noticed that like it came out just oh. a couple days ago. Like, and I knew you loved or you really enjoyed that low budget film. I did. I not as much of a fan. Was it the Butcher Block? Is that the sequel? Um, let me look it up real quick. Because I was looking on Letterbox, but I didn't see the name or at least recognize it. So let me see. Do, 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 do. Oh, it is. Fuck yeah, it is. Of course, yeah, and yeah, my Plex is not working on my phone at the moment. Oh, I see it is. Yeah, 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 okay. baby. Oh, fuck yeah. Yes, yeah, so I, I liked admit, it. Yeah, yeah, so I meant to I... mention that to you because I knew you uh, were a fan. I was a fan. Oh, I was great. Fuck yeah, I'm going to watch that baby tomorrow at the gym. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll be watching that bad boy. And, uh, well, yeah, I actually decided because I didn't have an older watch because I'd done a bunch of rewatches like uh, the Blob remake and stuff like that just nice. to have, have on in the background on Tubi. Um, nice. But I did something different. So for. Well? What the fuck? Sorry. I'm trying to look up a podcast to share, and it keeps playing. My apologies, Scott. Continue. <laughs> You're just trying to ruin my moment. No, I'm not. <laughs> fuck my life. Okay, it should be fine now. Sorry. All right. So, uh, so I, in the what's new category, um, I actually have finally gotten back into reading again, and I have like be kind of become obsessed to the point where I'm like buying like a couple new books every paycheck and I've Thank joined you, a, huh? Yeah, I've joined a couple horror groups that have talk about uh books and uh joined a finally created a Goodreads account cuz I never had one and started like keeping track of everything there and it's thanks to just trying to find something to do on my work breaks now that I'm trying to I'm still quote unquote trying to quit vaping but I don't bring a vape pen with me to work. So I read my books in my car on breaks mm. now just to keep my mind distracted. And mm -hmm. I do audio books on my drive to and from work now, like I used to do. And I don't, think <laughs> and, uh, I don't know why he's playing. Sorry, I have no idea what's oh, going right. yeah. um, And uh, it was also thanks to our good friend Kate Pollock and her new uh, podcast, Kate, uh, Kate Aju's uh, Book Reviews. That right. she's been doing. So I kind of got inspired there. So I decided to bring two books that I have just recently read and finished and uh, just talk about them real quick. So the first one is Dark, Ho uh, Dark Harvest uh, by Norman Partridge from 2007. Nice. Um, yep, this is the one that the movie Dark Harvest was uh, based on from uh, last year during October. Yeah. Uh, the, the synopsis is Halloween 1963. They call him the October Boy or Old Hacksaw Face or Sawtooth Jack. Whatever the name, everybody in this small Midwestern town knows who he is. How he rises from the cornfields every Halloween, a butcher knife in hand, and makes his way towards town where gangs of teenage boys eagerly await their chance to confront the legendary nightmare, both the hunter and the hunted. The October boy is the prize and an annual rite of life and death. Um, I won't get into it because it's a longer synopsis, but uh, I will just say, like, yeah, um, 
while it was a short book, uh, only 169 pages, I believe. So it was quick, easy read. I think I finished it in like four days. Um, I will say it's very weirdly paced structurally, like mm. book wise. There really isn't like, I would say a main character in this. Mm. It's just kind of a main, I would say almost like side characters throughout it. There's no one that this focuses a lot on. Um, really good book, but I actually am shocked to say this, but, uh, I think the movie covered it better and had a better cohesive story. You had uh, characters that you were like, for sure were main characters you followed. Yeah. It was, the movie was way more violent, like in gruesome, which, you know, oh, really, yeah. Which in book form, you usually get way more gruesome in the books because you can describe yeah, them. Yeah, totally. No, no, this one, like, it almost just like, didn't really even talk about the kills, just kind of went past them. And this, like in the mo- in the movie, you know, you've seen them, and it was violent and gory. And yeah, I think I liked the movie more, but I still think the Dark Harvest novel was really good. Awesome. Um, but, and then the next one is one that I've read or listened to the audiobook a million times over, but it's just one of my favorites. And I'm found out there's short stories that have come out that are based in this world, so I want to just kind of refresh myself. But that is Ghost Road Blues by Jonathan May- Mayberry, and this came out in 2006. It is the first story in the Pine Deep trilogy. Or should be using it as an alternative. Hey there. <laughs> I don't know why it keeps playing. Honestly, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with Spotify. For real, Scott. Uh, like, I have no idea what's happening. It's like my phone's cursed. This is how it ends. The cursed phone. It's a new Fucking movie. From Spotify. Honestly. Fucking Spotify. I just uh, turned off my volume, so now at least they can just keep talking and no one can hear it. So it's all fine. right. <laughs> but uh, this one is, uh, I'm not going to read the synopsis, just I will briefly talk about it. Yep, this is the first one in a trilogy that is a horror theory, horror series where something hap- bad happened in this town 30 years ago and the evil is kind of in the soil of this town and at first oh i like that yeah at first it was a solid solidarity like of one single type of evil but now this evil is kind of recruiting in a way and kind of uh corrupting people's dreams that are already kind of shitheads in the town anyways (laughs) and they start acting a little more out of sorts and doing more fucked up things until this evil force just kind of breaks free and all hell breaks loose throughout this entire trilogy. Um, but yeah, I I have loved this series. Like you can tell, Jonathan Mayberry is a fan of horror because he gives references to all these different uh, horror stars. In fact, I think in part three, there's a horror convention that's going on in the town and Tom Savini shows up. Uh, oh, I love it. That's he brings cool. up uh, uh, Kane Hodder's brought up, I believe, and Tony Todd. And <laughs> nice. So, I love it. Yeah. So, it, and it's, uh, but yeah, I just found out there's a short story compilation that has like five or six short stories that are based as prequels after the events and even some during the events of different people's perspectives. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to re re listen to the entire trilogy in my car and then I can jump into those short stories because, yeah. If you have not read Ghost Road Blues and you are a huge horror fan that loves to read, I cannot recommend Ghost Road Blues, the Pine Deep Trilogy, enough. It's fucking awesome. I love it. I'm glad that uh, you're bringing the bad boys to the to the discussion. Books are good. Yeah, and I'll say by the time, time we record again, I'll probably have two more to bring up. Oh, look at you doing all the reading. I am. <laughs> you reading the goodness. So the reason why my Spotify kept going off was because I was trying to find the the podcast I wanted to talk about. And my other podcast that's about anti-MLM kept playing. So all Ah. we kept listening to is this bitch go off about anti-MLM stuff. Anyway, um, so I recently was part of the Horror Returns. I didn't even tell Scotty I did this, actually. I was uh, I led their Woman in Horror episode for March. Lance had asked a year ago to do it. Um, so I got together a, a panel of women who are not as well known to the horror community. Um, I did invite Kate Pollock and Tammy Taminator, but unfortunately due to scheduling, they were not able to join. But Sabrina Vorman, who is a Canadian author of the Blood Coven, uh, the the Blood Coven, the Bloodbound series books, who just had her second book released 
last week, also good friends with Kate Pollock, and Jessica Smitch from the Horror Through Her Eyes podcast. And the horror cast. Yes, and the horror cast, but fuck the horror cast. That's what we're talking about. (laughs) Mark Nato always gets his time in the sun. Jessica and Tammy are going to shine bright right now. Yeah, I was going to say, I just knew of Jessica through horror cast at first and then followed them through horror through her eyes. So Tammy on her on this podcast, her name is Taminator Tammy Turner, and it's Jessica the Amateur Destroyer, which I think is like super <laughs> awesome. Um, let me just say first off, they have a like a, a a purpose for their podcast, so they kind of read their vision statement at the beginning of their episodes, like a true premium podcast. Not like what I say how we're a premium podcast. We're not compared to these two ladies. So I did a I, I hosted Jessica and and Sabrina, as well as Pedro. Uh, shouts out to Pedro, and I was the moderator, and nice. I went through the horror bracket of the best empowered female film, which I won't give the winner because you have to go to the horror returns and listen. But we had a very good conversation. It was almost three hours in length, oh, wow. um, but not boring because when oh, we got God. to the second round. Because nothing drives me nuts in Wrong Robins more than when we get to a second round and people repeat the points they made from the first time. Mm -hmm. So I specifically said, if you don't have new points, it's okay. You can just say what I said last time. (laughs) That's absolutely fine. Um, And people came up with new points or they just like moved forward with films. Nice. So it was a very, very interesting episode. You may want to listen to it, Scott. It's been dropped. Um, okay, I think nice. you would enjoy it, um, and you should support me because I'm your friend. Oh, I support you. I support all these women that like. I actually was curious about uh, Sabrina Vollman because uh, because of Kate, I've been wanting to kind of look into purchasing some of her books and support her and like read into these books. Yeah, I'm gonna so. be buying them too to support her because she's my Canadian sister. So <laughs> we have to as Canadians, right? right. And yeah, um, and, uh, and yeah, like everyone else on this podcast, like plus it's the horror return. So yeah, I got a list of this. Yeah, like so I got to hang out with a bunch of hot men and hot ladies. Like fuck, I was just like, entire <laughs> <laughs> time, fanning myself, just trying to keep myself, just trying to keep myself under, under, under cover. Um. Anyway, so so Tammy and Jessica have this podcast, horror through her eyes. Horror from an all-female point of view. They had their opening episode where they talk about themselves, which is very interesting. But they also talk about Sleepaway Camp. And I think it's really hard to talk about movies that have been talked to death about. Uh, We did that years ago when we went through the slasher shed and we talked about the history of horror and all that kind of stuff. And they're doing something very similar. And I applaud them for that because you and I gave that up at what point? Episode 50? I don't remember. Yeah, something like that. that. Episode 50, episode 65. But then again, it it does run its time. You know, I think the one thing with doing themes is that you do get to a point where – it runs its time. And Scott and I were lucky that we started that at a time where it was COVID and there wasn't a lot going on. So we could do these lavish, lengthy, well-researched podcasts. Like I used to research an article Mm -hmm. and compare it to the theme. And then we would bring in movies. Like it was a very, very true premium podcast. We've now gone down to the bargain then but yeah, we've gone you know to the, the bare essentials but we're reliable and you can come here for the newest releases like a premium podcast should be <laughs> so if anyone is interested please check out um that podcast it's gonna it's already been dropped on the horror returns and yeah and, and please check out these two ladies i think they're quite phenomenal very intelligent and um you know lucky we're lucky to be in a community where people continue to develop and create new podcasts i always think there's space for more um when scott and i started out we had some people that were kind of dicks to us and i'm going to call it out right now we had some people that weren't that nice when we we began um Mm -hmm. a lot of like we were the new kids on the block and for some reason people thought that you couldn't have other people like fucking talking into a microphone like you do you man and welcome more more to the party the better because it just allows more voices to be shared so exactly right and we've been at this bitch for five years now scott and i need the fresh meat coming in <laughs> <laughs> we're tired of we're tired of being the newbies yeah oh well definitely not the movies anymore <laughs> right 
So, yeah, I'm looking forward to when we meet up again, Scotty, and we uh, all have seen Imaginary. I do plan on going next weekend to see it, though I don't think it will be anything like, you know. Yeah. But I think it will be okay. Yeah, I'll say it it looked interesting, so I'm sure I'll watch it at some point, but probably not in theaters. We'll see, though. Right. Um, My life's gotten a lot busier, so it's a little harder to get to the theaters. Yeah, well, you know what? Are you missing really anything? Like, yeah, it's good to go support horror, but you know what I mean? Like, right. You know, sometimes you just got to pick your, pick the way you support. And we support by sharing the word. Exactly. Word of mouth is very important. Right. Right. Ass to mouth, not so important, but word. Uh, It just depends. (laughs) Depends on who you are. Right. Well, (laughs) thank you as always for joining us. And as always, we encourage you to listen to our podcasting friends. We talked about the horror returns already. As always, we love our. Um, dummies of horror. We love our Rob Humphreys. What is it? Slasher radio. That's still yep. going on strong slasher radio. Um, we love our Dave C and Christian at the exploding heads movie podcast. We love our Dave Bailey and Android virus at the cemetery gates podcast. We love our ladies at horror through her eyes podcast. And of course, where would we all be without Mr. Mark NATO at the horror cast? Right? Like, honestly, oh, and we also can't forget Matt Wood and Kate Pollock from mm. the eternal darkness of the not so spot. Well, I could forget podcast. Matt, I could forget <laughs> but I could never forget Kate, but Matt, Matt, I mean, I, I will never forget you, Matt. I love you. I do love Matt too. And I love his <laughs> reviews. Honestly, his reviews are the best written reviews ever. They're so oh, yeah. good. Nah, he cracks so me good. up. <laughs> and he's so honest. He is honest. And he always does funny comparisons. Like he takes something from the movie and rates it out of 10. So I always mm-hmm. find that really fun. <laughs> yeah. We are we are proud members of the Legion Podcast Network. You can find us there as well as a variety of other Legion shows. There also is a Patreon in which has lots of extra bonuses and specials that you can do. And if you are not a Patreon member yet. What uh you waiting for what are you waiting for come on and join us now what are you waiting for what are you waiting for join us join us today and support your brought your podcast it's not Minimum, listen to Horror Through Her Eyes, the new podcast. Listen to the podcast that we talked about earlier. Listen to all of them. Fresh cuts, everybody. Just go out there and show some podcasting love. You know, you'll find the one that works for you or the couple that work for you. And hopefully we're still part of the rotation. If not, well, <laughs> well we're not. You know, you know, I'm always in that rotation. <laughs> you always come back. <laughs> always I'm never gone. Back. We do are the premium choice for 2023s, though Mark Nato, sorry, 2024s, Mark Nato does give us a run for his money because it wasn't for Mark Nato, we would not be the premium podcasters we are this, to <laughs> right? this day. I was like, we would not have the options that we do for watching shows. <laughs> and Mark Nato, we trust. Let's just put it that way. Mark Nato, we trust. So thank you, Mark Nato, again. You know, you're the best. And also, thank you, Nudie, because you also bring the stuff. To yeah. The yeah, thank you for making this look better than we actually are. And Shudder, for God's sakes, for the love of God, I appreciate your variety, but please pick up some something good this year. Please. Um, do you have anything to say to the good folks before we peace out there, Scotty? Until next time, kitties. I don't have anything clever to say right now, so I'll just say unpleasant dreams. Keep reading. Scott's going to now do a, a dark version of the Reading Rainbow. Yes. I'm going to create my own book club, and it's going to be like a Saw movie. Why did you finish this book? You have five seconds to finish it, or I break your fingies. And then provide a synopsis of what happened. Yes. Like the most stressed, <laughs> stressed out book report writing ever. But until next time, see ya. Unpleasant dreams. Bye.